Hi everyone, this is Joanna with the Los Alamos STEAM Lab, and today I'm going to be talking about fractals, Sierpinski triangles, chaos games, and how you can combine all of these concepts together using Python turtle graphics. I'm first going to start by talking a little bit about what exactly a fractal is. A fractal is a pattern that repeats itself at different scales in a property known as self-similarity. Fractals can be never-ending and infinitely complex, meaning you can zoom in on them and see the same shapes forever. Fractals can be found all around us in nature, geometry, algebra, and more. You can see a few examples here at the bottom of the screen. One of the most well-known fractals is the Sierpinski Triangle. This self-similar geometric fractal was first described by the Polish mathematician Václav Sierpinski in 1915. This triangle shown on the left can be made by cutting out smaller and smaller triangles from a large triangle, which I will show how in the next few slides. As I just mentioned, the first thing you'll want to do is start out with a single large triangle. Next, you're going to find the midpoints on the line segments of this triangle. From here, you'll connect these midpoints to form a new triangle that will be cut out from the original large triangle. You can then repeat this process of finding the midpoints and cutting out smaller triangles from what remains of that original triangle. From here, you can continue the process as many times as you like. In theory, this can be done an infinite number of times, but as you can imagine, this will become quite the daunting task. A chaos game, unlike most games you can think of, requires no players or engagement once it gets running. Chaos games can be used to create fractals like the Sierpinski triangle that we just talked about. This can be done by setting specific starting conditions that will unfold deterministically based on a specific set of rules. The reason these are called chaos games is because they use randomly generated points as part of the conditions that ultimately generate a fractal. Python can be used to implement a chaos game and create a Sierpinski triangle using turtle graphics. This is done by the program starting off choosing a random point on the screen or turtle canvas. From here, one of the three corners of the triangle will be chosen at random and a dot will be drawn at the midpoint between that corner and the initial random point. As the game continues, more dots will be drawn at the midpoint between the previously drawn dot and a randomly selected corner of the triangle. This process will repeat for a set number of iterations and a Sierpinski triangle will eventually begin to form. Now that you understand the basics, I'm going to show you how to do this process yourself. Here I have two links. The first is to a website that lets you run Python and turtle graphics, and the second is to a Google document where you can access the code we'll be using. These links can also be found in the video description, and I recommend opening them in two separate tabs or windows. We're going to start out by going to the Trinket website and signing up for a free account if you don't already have one. All you need to enter is your email address and a password. You don't even have to confirm anything before you can start using this site. From here, you're going to press the home button on the top left of the screen and then the new Trinket button on the top right. Then you're going to go to the first option, which is Python. And this is going to let you start your new trinket. Next, you'll go over to the Google Doc and select the entire document, and then copy it and paste it right into your trinket. From here, if you press the Run button, you'll see your little turtle on the right of the screen begin to draw your triangle. At first, the dots might appear totally random in their placement, but as your chaos game progresses, you can begin to see a Sierpinski triangle form. Because the chaos game requires many iterations, if you're watching the turtle draw each dot, it can take a really long time. I've gone ahead and sped up this portion of the video to allow you to see that as the game runs, the Sierpinski triangle becomes clearer and more defined. If at any point you want to stop the game, you can always just press the stop button located right above the area where the code is. As I mentioned, although watching the turtle draw in real time can be really cool, it's also incredibly time consuming. So in the next step, I'm going to show you how to get your triangle to show up nearly instantaneously. If you've already looked through the code, you may have noticed that some of the lines have comments shown in green that describe what that segment of code means or does. If we go to line 20, we can see a comment stating that the line below it, line 21, 
as well as the very last line of code, line 88, should be uncommented if you don't want to watch the chaos game unfold in real time like we just did. To uncomment a line, all you have to do is simply delete the hash mark or pound sign at the beginning of the line, as you can see me doing here on lines 21 and 88. From here, if you run the program, your Sierpinski triangle should show up in just a few seconds. There are a number of things you can do to change or customize your triangle. For example, if we go to line 19, we can switch out the word black with a different color. As you can see, I'm typing blue within those quotation marks. From here, if you press run again, your Sierpinski triangle will then show up as whatever color you specified. Here you can see I'm repeating the same process to change the color to green, yellow, orange, and purple. You can also adjust the height and width of your canvas on lines 57 and 58. You can see here that I'm changing the width from 500 to 300 and the height from 500 to 600 to create a triangle that is taller and narrower. If I change the canvas width again to 400 and the canvas height to 200, I can create a triangle that is shorter and wider. This concludes our Chaos Game tutorial, but I strongly encourage you to take some time to look further into the code and gain a greater understanding of the process, as well as see how else you can customize your triangles. If you visit our website at lasteamlab.com, you can find more Python resources and tutorials under the Curriculum tab. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.